everyone and welcome to another edition of the Kathy show with my very good friends Renska and Ale who are scientists that are going to talk about one of my favorite topics sleep I'm super excited about this so you guys are going to talk a, talk a little bit about not just how we sleep but also how animals sleep huh it's going to be amazing I'm super excited. Yeah, I'm super excited. A lot of my favorite animals in this show, I'll show you. Excellent, okay, let's get started. I think before we can get into how animals sleep, we first kind of have to know why we sleep, right? And it's very interesting because nobody really agrees on the function of sleep yet. And that's crazy if you think about how much we sleep, right? So you would think that scientists already know why we sleep, but we don't. There are three like theories and one is like recharge. So you go to bed and you don't move a lot. So it's really to rest and recharge your body so you can be fresh and energetic the next day. It's one of the reasons why we might sleep. The other one is actually making memories. So maybe if you watch this presentation and then the following night you'll sleep really, really well because you have to conserve all this information in your brain and sleep is great for conserving information. And the last theory is actually to clean out our brain because when we are awake, a lot of toxins build up in our brain. And when we are asleep, this gives our body like a chance to clean it all out. Huh, okay, so then does that mean that if I have a really bad night's sleep, then I'm like, I have a lot of toxins in my brain? Yeah, actually it does. Yeah. <laughs> that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Gotta say. Wow, that's interesting. And then when you make, when you're making memories, is that, sort of like when you're dreaming and you're making memories? Sometimes, like dreams can really be to process what you encounter during the day and usually it's very surrealistic, right? So it's not exactly the experience, but a form of the experience. And I think this is a way of the brain processing what happened during the day. Okay, okay, all right, that makes sense. Oh, look at those guys. I know. <laughs> I mean, one of our favorite animals is of course humans, so us. <laughs> And human sleep is actually really, really interesting because it changes a lot over the lifespan, as for most animals actually. So when we get born, we sleep a ton, like almost 18 hours a day. So we're asleep almost the whole time. And you know, scientists think that a big part of this is like building your brain and building muscles and building like all this energy to, to become a real human at some point. And as we get older and older, sleep kind of, the sleep need decreases a little. So when you're an adult, usually you sleep between six to eight hours per night. So it decreases a lot, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, and is, is this why I keep waking up in the middle of the night now? Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. It's like sleep gets worse. But it's like, I older. love sleep so much. I want more of it. I know, yeah. <laughs> We're trying to discover how you can sleep more, but it's very challenging. Yeah. It's very challenging. Yeah. And it's actually one of the reasons why sometimes you notice, for example, if you're sick, that you sleep a lot more because it gives your body the chance and your immune system a chance to be really active and to, to fight the germs that make you sick, right? So it's, sleep is a very dynamic process and if you need more sleep, just sleep more. And if you need less sleep, sleep less. And I, and I guess those of us in the hospital know how much we love our sleep and how much we do not want to be interrupted in the middle of the night to get our vitals checked. Because, oh. <laughs> yeah, we want to sleep a lot here. I think it's great to sleep a lot, Yeah, especially in the hospital. Yeah, sleeping on land, well, I mean, I would hope that we would be sleeping on land. We sleep on <laughs> land and many other animals also sleep on land. And luckily we usually have a bedroom or a hospital bed or something to sleep in under covers where we feel safe and secure. But animals, you know, that are out in the wild and very often get predated, they have to find other ways of sleeping because yeah, they don't have a blanket and covers and a bed to sleep in. Yeah, I've, al I've actually always wondered about that. I'm like, do they just like crawl under a bush and fall asleep? Some do and some don't. Yeah. I think we're gonna get into it. All right. Yeah, so I'm going to tell you a story about how alligators and crocodiles sleep. So 
I am an ornithologist, which means I study birds. And in many of my field expeditions, I go to the rainforest like the Amazon to find birds. But over there, I also find other animals. And sometimes uh, in Costa Rica, for example, I found crocodiles. And I was wondering, you know, how do crocodiles and alligators sleep? So crocodiles do this very interesting thing. Like they are predators, right? So they are eating other animals and they normally sleep in groups, uh, sometimes on the water, sometimes on the land but they keep one eye closed, you know, and one eye open, just carefully looking for other predators and like things that might show up on the water. And the so, other... so they're literally asleep, but one eye is open? Yeah, they're like always like just watching out, like is someone coming, is someone coming? Should wow. I keep a, keeping an eye out? <laughs> and the other cool thing that they do many of you are familiar with you know how birds how birds go in the winter but what happens when it's really really hot outside like we've had for example summers here in california that are really hot well these animals do this thing called estivation where they just bury themselves in caves or under mud like i'm showing you here to spend the very hot months out so that's different from sleep but they're still being you know still and quiet for like two three months a year estivating wait so are they do they do they eat not Darn. very much they just like wait the heat out so this is sort of like hibernation only instead of getting rid get, get like hiding away from the cold they're hiding away from the hot exactly wow what why would you need to hide away so much from the hot well because like if it's really hot outside uh, first, like there's not a lot of food anymore. Like they live in wetlands, and the wetlands start to dry out, and all the stuff they eat starts to migrate somewhere else or go away. But also because it takes a lot of energy to mm. look for food, and if it's already really hot, mm. and um, they like depend on having the temperature, like the mm -hmm. outside temperature dictates their temperature, so. It, it's really not good for them. So they just wait out the hottest months of the year. I mean, I know at least during the summer when it's super, super hot out, all I want to do is take a nap. Like exactly. It makes me really sleepy. So <laughs> maybe I'll try estimating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, so we were just talking about bears and their hibernation. So is that the same thing as sleeping? Uh, I'll let Renske explain this. Actually, it's the opposite. It's not the same and it, it sounds so counterintuitive because what they do is they go into their den, they don't move, they don't eat, they don't drink, they, they do nothing, right? Yeah. So it feels like sleeping because that is the behavior that we do when we sleep. But actually hibernation, it's not the same. It's a different state of not really sleep. It's a state in which the bears actually, they drop their temperature, mm -hmm. their body temperature, so they conserve a lot of energy. and. When they wake up out of hibernation, so when the weather is a bit better and it's warmer and there's more things to eat out there, so it makes sense to wake up, actually one of the first things they do is, is go to sleep. Because oh, hibernation wow. is not sleeping. So yes, they're in their den and they don't do anything, but it's not the same as sleeping. Huh. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Okay, so hibernation is not sleep. Exactly. It looks different and if you look at the the brain waves, for example, they also show different patterns. Huh. So it's not the same as sleeping. And I think bears are a really good example of also how dynamic sleep can be if it has to be. So bears hibernate all winter. In spring, they eat and they sleep a little. In summer, they eat and sleep a little. And then in fall, they don't sleep at all. Like they just eat and eat and eat and get fat for winter. So they can hibernate <laughs> all winter. So it's really, it's, it's a really special way because can you imagine not sleeping for a month or so? It's too hard, like no. we cannot do it, right? No. So bears are really, really special, I think. So, so how long are they hibernating for? It depends on the outside temperature. Like if you look at the bears in Alaska, for example, they hibernate for seven, eight months almost because it's so cold wow. and there's no prey outside. So there's really no, no purpose of being outside, looking for animals to eat, burning all these calories when there's hardly nothing to hunt for. And here in California, they hibernate a little less, like usually three to four months right. or so, because it doesn't get as cold. So you literally have to eat enough in your short 
whatever, four or five months exactly. to be able to not eat for seven or eight months. Yeah, to make it through hibernation because you burn some calories wow. even though you don't do a lot. So you have to get really, really fat to right. make it through winter. Right, I mean, I've seen the pictures of those bears in Alaska like eating that salmon exactly. from the lake, from the yeah. stream. They just fish it out and they store it all. They burn as little calories as possible and they get really, really fat. Wow, that is crazy. It's amazing. That is so cool. Yeah, and actually there is this competition for anybody who's interested in it. It, it just got concluded, but every summer there is a competition in Katmai National yes. Park, which is a huge population of grizzly bears, and they all fish in the same river, and you can vote for the fattest bear. So basically you have to kind of estimate which bear got the fattest. I love it, and I would like to tell everybody I have always voted for Holly. <laughs> I mean, Holly is awesome, but have you seen Grazer? Uh, yes, I have seen Grazer. These are fat, fat bears. Oh, man. Yeah. Sloths. Sloths, I think, are sort of like what everyone thinks of when they think of, like, a sleepy animal. Yeah. Yeah. They have the sleepy reputation, but it's kind of unwarranted. And this is a very shocking thing to say to everybody. That is shocking. I know. <laughs> I know, it's a big misconception, but in part it's driven because sloths are so slow. slow. So they, you know, they look so sleepy, but actually they sleep in the wild between eight to 10 hours per day. So they don't sleep much more than we do, actually. All right, they just move. This is why they all work at the DMV, as we all know. <laughs> it's true. They move so slow, slow, they have very slow metabolism and the misconception mostly comes from you know scientists studying sloths in the zoo for example where they get fed and don't they don't have to go out and look for leaves oh. and when you have all this opportunity to sleep and you're really really bored like then yeah you're... you'll go to sleep <laughs> you know so that's a big you know, difference between studying animals in the wild and actually studying them in captivity. It's that not makes the same. A, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. A yeah. lot of sense. Yeah. So, can you explain a little bit what does that mean to have like a slow metabolism? What is that? So it means that basically anything you eat, it takes a long time to digest, mm -hmm. and it takes a long time for the energy to to be available to you. So basically, everything takes a long time. So when we eat something, like the energy comes out almost immediately, well, not almost immediately, but quite quickly. Uh -huh. But for these animals, they have a slow metabolism, so anything they eat, it takes a long time to get digested Got and it. for that energy to come out. And then in addition to that, they have this diet of just eating plants that have very few calories. So they almost have to eat constantly to get their energy a tiny, tiny bit up. Right, so it's almost like they don't have the energy to move any faster than... Basically, oh, yeah. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Look how cute they were. <laughs> okay, so I think that sleeping at sea would be, first of all, I mean, very hard <laughs> because mm -hmm. that movement would probably get to me. But then, like, how do you not drown? Yeah. It's a big issue, I think, and lots of animals have found different coping mechanisms to be able to sleep at sea and not drown. So one of them <laughs> is the elephant seal, which is awesome because they have the weird little yeah. thing on their snout. And there's large populations here in California, actually. Um, there are these animals that migrate twice a year. So if you migrate twice a year, you have to find a space to sleep, right? And of course, they're also predated by large animals, so they had to come up with a very innovative way of sleeping. And it's actually, they sleep in some kind of free fall. So animal seals are really good at diving and they can dive up to several hundreds of meters deep. So they can wow. go really, really deep below the line where predators would be. So they go from the surface and they kind of drift downwards. Wow. And in that drift, they fall asleep because they know they will not be predated there. Wow. And then once they reach the bottom, they wake up and then they swim upwards so they can breathe again. Okay, so they're not breathing at all while they're doing this. While they're going down, they don't breathe, but, but they're also great at like taking one big gasp of air, of air and then just keeping that. Well, I do have to say that like that rocking motion would probably put me to sleep, I so know. that would be great. I think they sleep great. Wow. Oh, I love dolphins. 
Yeah, and the dolphins came up with their own way of sleeping. It's uh -huh. kind of like the crocodiles that Ale told us about. Because, you know, our brains are actually split in half. We have a right brain and a left brain, and they talk all the time. But dolphins actually found a way to sleep with one brain half at the time, just like the crocodiles. So it means that one brain half has to sleep and the other one is awake. And with the one that is awake, they will breathe underwater and they will keep on moving. Wow. So they can do the basic movements and the basic breathing with one brain half at the time. So sometimes when we see dolphins, they could potentially be asleep, even yeah. though they're like still swimming. Exactly. Isn't that amazing that you can keep on moving, but still be asleep? It's almost like sleepwalking. Like, yeah. when some people are sleepwalking, they're, they're just being dolphins. It's fine. <laughs> in a way, yes. In a way, yes. Wow. So they're sleep swimming. They're of. sleep swimming, yeah. That is fascinating. And Parrot then, fishes. They're awesome. They're so colorful and beautiful, and they came up with their own very innovative way of sleeping. Okay. Which is blowing a bubble of their own mucus. Can you Wait, believe it? That's a bubble that's around them? Yeah, they make their own little sleeping bag at night. <gasps> no way. Yeah. Like when I go camping with a tent. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's, what's inside the bubble? Is it water or air? Um, it's just water. So it's really a protective little layer. And it all has to do with the ecosystem that they're in. Because what? during the day, um, there are cleaner fish available. So there are lots uh -huh. and lots of parasites that live in the sea. Uh -huh. And if fish are covered in parasites, it can be very detrimental. They can sometimes even die from it, right? So parasites need to be cleaned off. And during the day, there are cleaner fish. So that's something that we call diurnal. They're active during the day. But at night, these cleaner fish sleep. Mm -hmm. And if the parrot fish doesn't move and it's just, you know, lying there, right. all the parasites will come to their skin and eat and, and infect them. Right. So they found a way of blowing this bubble, so their own little sleeping bag, and it keeps the, the um, parasites away. That is ama amazing. Can you believe it? So wait, what, what is that bubble made out of? Their own saliva. So and they then they just, they just pop it when they wake up yeah. and then swim away? Exactly, exactly. What? Can you imagine blowing such a big bubble of your own? And then just sleeping in my own saliva <laughs> sleeping bag. It sounds a bit gross, but it's very functional. I <laughs> am slightly jealous. I want to <laughs> learn how to do that. That is, do any other fish do that? Because that's really smart. It's really smart. I don't know of any other fish actually that do it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it also shows how evolution drives these kind of things, right? Right. Like some fish sleep with one brain half at the time and others make a bubble and others sleep while they drift down. It's it's crazy. Do, okay, wait. So just going back to the sorry, going back to that parrotfish parrotfish for a second. So parrotfish don't they don't move or anything. They just they literally like will sit at the bottom and fall asleep. Yes. Is that how most fish sleep? Yeah, most fish don't need to move a lot. For sleep, uh, sorry, for for oxygen for, generation. Right, right. So they're usually quite quiescent. I would say they sometimes move a little, but not a lot. So do do you know if other fish have the problem of the parasites? I'm not sure actually. Maybe there's something special about the parrot fish they skin do. that the parasites really really like. Wow, that is fascinating. And one of my absolute favorite animals of all time, even though one of them once bit me. Oh. The octopus. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Someday I will tell you all that story. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. You're always full of fun stories. But an octopus, how does an octopus sleep? Yeah, so for years we thought like octopus are just kind of like just interesting animals because they can change colors and things uh -huh. like that. But people have really undervalued how smart these animals are and you know how much of a similar cognitive processes they have to humans so they can do really complex tasks like they can escape you know Korea but when it comes to sleep it was really interesting that we learned that they have two faces they have like a quiet uh, face where they just like shut down their eyes and they like crawl up and they're pretty still they don't move much but then they have an active face sleep where they change colors if they're dreaming. So for example, here you see this uh, octopus that 
they thought it's changing to a red color, which means they start to get angry. Uh -huh. And they thought probably this octopus is dreaming with the predator, the one who comes to chase it. And that's like a whole new area that we're just learning about wow. octopus. Like so they totally things. dream. They totally dream, change colors, make... Oh my gosh. And so that's like uh, in their active phase. Do we, do we know if all animals dream? Uh, no, we don't know that. And well, I can tell you that no, not all of them dream because not all of them have brains, right? Like the same one. Right, okay. So like some animals wouldn't do that, like an urchin probably would not. Dream. Wow. So does an octopus in their active phase, will, will it move around? Uh, yeah, it can move around. So uh, again, it's like sleepwalking. It's like sleepwalking. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of these animals do these sleepwalking, sleep swimming type of activities yeah, but it, they're well, just similar to us in many ways a lot of them sometimes you can also know. see it i don't know maybe some you know most people have like dogs as as a pet right and sometimes you see your dog sleeping and then their little paws move or sometimes they even bark and it's really because they're dreaming and just like humans you know wow. like it's it's very very funny that is that's amazing for, okay, so for a lot of these animals that have have multiple, um, I guess, types of sleep, I guess you can call it, do we, do humans have different types of sleep? So we have different stages of sleep. So we have the deep sleep and the less deep sleep, uh -huh. I would say. And during the deep sleep, it's really, it's hard to wake up, right? Because you're really, really sleepy. And this is also the stage where you don't really dream. Like the dreaming really happens in the lighter stage that usually happens in the second part of the night. So the first part of the night is for the deep, deep sleep because in case we wake up after that first part of the night, we can still function the next uh -huh. day. But the second part of the night is where the, the dreams happen. And sometimes when you wake up at the right sleep phase, you will remember your dreams, but yeah. only for a little bit. Yeah, I've always wondered about that because I feel like I never dream, mm -hmm. but I know that I probably do, but I, yes. I just very, very rarely remember my dreams. Yeah. So, which is very sad to me because you know that I have just the weirdest dreams. And I'm sure that I would have way more good stories if I could just remember them <laughs> happening. So then these animals, do they also have a like, an octopus goes into active sleep and then like it's a, a stage that they'll go into and yeah, then you can yeah, catch they, them into these different stages. They cycle. I mean, octopus, like of course, when they're sleeping in the wild, they're also kind of waiting for predators to be around. So yeah. They don't go as, as sleep like us for like eight hours, right. one night out. They sleep, you know, different times of day. So different times they go into like active sleep uh, or quiet sleep. Yeah. I think it would be so interesting if humans had to worry about something eating us mm. in the middle of the night. I mean, I sometimes think about the monsters that might be hiding in my closet but really that doesn't keep me up every night. But you know, when we, but, like humans and like early humans used to go yeah. in groups, like much like monkeys do now. Yep. And we used to go in groups and that's why today we still have people that are like early morning birds like I right. am or night owls because we used to have like back, 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 our ancestors used to have those shifts to like keep an eye out for the others sleeping. So. Which I guess is an important thought that if you don't like to wake up in the morning, it's not your fault. Yeah. It's your like oh, early ancestor humans. Yeah. And there's you nothing wrong helping with helping at others like just by guarding around and making sure that right. yeah. they wouldn't eat the early morning people like me. I mean that, to that actually makes a lot of sense when you think about like way back when when we were all in the wild. Trying to, yeah, in the wild, trying not to get eaten and attacked by things. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, sleeping in the sky, how do things not fall out of the sky? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll wow. talk about like, the animals that can fly. And a lot of them are birds, of course. So, I'll teach you about some of my favorite animals. So, I'll tell you about hummingbirds. So, yeah. hummingbirds are really beautiful animals, they're tiny, tiny and they're the most energy consuming yes. animal there is because of their body size.
So some uh, hummingbirds would be visit about 10,000 flowers per day mm -hmm. to try to get all the food they need to keep their metabolism going. So wow. Like compared to the sloth, these are like really fast metabolism. Right. And they eat the, the flour like nectar, like sugar, and then they burn it immediately. So they have to keep eating all the time. So if they went to sleep, they would basically die because like their metabolism would like burn out. Oh, because they're not they're eating? Not eating. Because exactly. they're not wow. They're eating, you know, it's like athletes when they're training and they like run and then they eat gels or something. Like this is like how these birds are all the time wow. when they're awake. So they came up with this idea called Turper, and I'm gonna show you here in this like cams, it's like a heat map. So when the bird is awake, like look at those uh, red, um, like body heat coming up. So this is a, oops, this is an awake bird. That's an awake bird. It's like using all the energy. It's like, <laughs> it's warm. It's keeping its body warm. But then at night, it goes into torpor, which is kind of like a hibernation. So every night, oh. these birds, shut down, hibernate, and then look, no heat is emitted from their body, like the other, the other picture of the um, bird that is asleep. And then every morning they have to get up and go straight to eat, and that's, they do this every single night. So torpor is, is torpor sleep? Nope, torpor is hibernation, but it's kind of the way they sleep. So that means hum hummingbirds don't dream then. No. They're, they wouldn't be able to dream. No. Oh, no. poor hummingbirds. <laughs> and wow. Then we have bats, which are, they also oh fly, but they're yes. different than the birds. <laughs> Look at they're that. mammals, so they're like humans. Like they, for example, female bats like breastfeed their young. Like that's uh -huh. stuff that like the birds don't do. And bats sleep during the day because bats are mostly nocturnal and they sleep in groups, but they hang themselves. And then you can see if, if you this, move a little bit. Uh, yeah, this you can one. See they wrap themselves I around their it. wings so they have their own blanket. <laughs> and they hang themselves upside down. But then you would think, well, if I do that, even in the playground, like all the blood rushes to your head. head. So how did these guys do it for the whole day as they are sleeping? Well, it turns out that they figured out that in their legs, they have like these tendons that they can lock when they're upside down that keep sending blood flow to the head. Oh. So they figured out a way to keep the circulation going and then to just give themselves a big a hug. hug with their blanket. <laughs> I love, okay, I love these animals that like make their own little tents and blankets and like they make themselves so cozy and look at how, like I would love to sleep like this. This looks like my dream, yeah, except for the whole blood rushing to the head thing because I don't think my tendons would do that. I mean, but, and people oh, are I'm scared weird. of bats, but they look so cute. Oh, like I love bats. I, bats are great. This looks like actually a pretty big bat. That's like a flying fox. <laughs> it looks pretty, Which, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then another one that people often ask me about are owls because I spend a lot of time in the forest mm -hmm. outside finding birds, and birds are mostly awake during the day. Day. But some are awake during the night, so they sleep during the day. So I found owls sleeping. When I'm looking for, say, woodpecker, suddenly I found an owl nest with owls. <laughs> so one thing is that owls have a lot of bones in their neck. Mm -hmm. So we can see owls like turning their turning. neck, like almost like full around. So when they're adult, they normally go to sleep by turning their neck and just going like this. But baby owls and what's the word for a baby owl? An owlet? Yeah, oh. owlets have heads that are so big for their bodies. <laughs> They're so big that they could not do that. They can't keep their head up. They're like those oh, things in like, like a the bobble cars. head. Yeah, a bobble head. So they actually sleep face down, with babies. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see a baby owl and owlet sleeping like head down. <laughs> and sometimes the adults like kind of remember that. So I found sometimes like the adult ones kind of doing the baby sleep pose, but usually the adults just turn around and sleep in branches while the babies are in the nest. Wow. Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> That's 
it's hilarious that their heads are like too big for their bodies. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're very smart animals and they tend to um, have really complicated like cognitive processes. Like they hunt, they do lots of things. So I wouldn't be surprised if these guys do dream. Mm. And, uh, but those massive heads are just like important as they grow up and yeah. then their body catches up but at first they're just really big heads yeah <laughs> and it's also interesting i think that um we have these animals that are awake at nighttime because i think for most of us we think of nighttime as being associated with sleep like that's when people or things sleep are is at night but that's not true there's like a lot of animals that Nighttime is actually their, what we consider day, like that's their yeah, active time. Active. Yeah, there's so many animals that are nocturnal, like most snakes, frogs, tarantulas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. owls, like there's so many cool animals that are awake at night. Yeah, I mean, I know, I think we've talked in the past about going to the jungle since we've both been to the jungle and the yeah. jungle just comes alive at night. Like it's more alive at night than during the day. Absolutely. And also because humans have like worked around like the jungle and make noises during the day and hunted. So actually a lot of animals shifted their behaviors, like for example, coyote. Like coyote used to be more active during the day, but now they are more active at like sunset because that's when humans start settling down. So a lot of animals, even if their natural pattern is to be awake during the day, they've shifted so that they don't like interact much yeah. with us. But yeah, the jungle is like a fascinating place to be at night. A little scary for sure, <laughs> but it's really like loud and yes. alive and yes. glowing the dark creatures, like really cool. It wow. is very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that is a good thing to, to think about. And I think something that we've talked about a lot before is that humans really do have a big impact on the environment and, and the things that are around us. So we've kind of changed how nature is. That's my thing. Yeah. Yeah, and just to wrap up, we wanted to kind of summarize a little bit about the like big words and ideas that we just shared today. And so I'm gonna quiz you, Kat. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> we can quiz you to see okay. how much you learn. I can do us. this. I can do so, this. What is estivation and which animals do it? Well, estivation for sure is something that I think I would like to try. <laughs> I don't think I can do it, but it is. The animals that do it, was it the crocodile yes. did it? And um, does a dolphin, is that considered estivation? No. no. Just the crocodile. Just the crocodile. Okay, okay. If you ever manage to do it, let me know, because I will study you in the lab then. <laughs> <laughs> and that is when I, is that the one where I, it's not sleep, but I have uh, shut myself down. <laughs> you got like, this. So because it's what? too hot and yeah, I don't want to move around too much because it's really, really hot outside. Exactly. So it's like the opposite of hibernation. If you Temperature. Go, you go into this, like shut down your metabolism if it's too hot and crocodiles and alligators do this. Right. Yes. And then hibernation would be when it's really cold outside. So animals like bears do it. And basically we shut down our metabolisms and we eat a lot, a lot, a lot because we need to basically n be in hibernation for potentially, if it's really cold outside for eight months. or like months yeah. and months, more than half of the year. Absolutely. We're yeah. in hibernation. And then we have the unihemispheric sleep, which is the... What the half of your brain. Yes. Uh, so dolphins, dolphins and... Whales. The, it's yeah. so cool that they like are s sort of still alert and then half of their brains can be like, I'm just gonna rest. Yeah. You know what would be great if in school, all the kids who fall asleep in class would just keep half of their brains awake. You know, oh, half of a perfect. brain would be better than zero brain. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> you know? And then we got diurnal and nocturnal. So whether, what does it mean? If they're sure. awake during the day, you are diurnal. If you are awake at night, like the owls, you yeah. would be nocturnal. That's right. And then yeah. we want to just uh, mention quickly that we love animals and we love wildlife, but unfortunately, a lot of these species that we show today, including the parrotfish, 
are at risk of extinction. That means a lot of them will be gone from our planet forever. So we want to make the plug to please help us save them. And one way that you can do that is by signing petitions. I put together a list with a link here on the kinds of petitions you can sign to help save animals, but also to learn more about this. And if you're mm -hmm. interested, there's a whole collection of cool stuff by National Geographic Kids Collection of different stuff about animals. And I know a lot of you are watching movies and documentaries, and there's one night on Earth if you care about learning more about the nocturnal animals and how our planet gets really alive at night. Yeah, I will definitely be watching that. Thank you. That is amazing. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thank I learned you for having us. I learned a lot about sleep and the idea that there's more than one kind of resting, I guess. Yeah. Where yeah. it's it's sleep and yeah. it's hibernation and estivation and torpor and I mean, I guess humans are not, the way that humans work is not how everything else on the earth works. Like there's so many different ways yeah. that, that you can rest. And I All think animals came up with different solutions for the same concept. And also it depends, like some of them live by themselves, some of them live in yeah. the some of them are, live in the sky, in the water, on land. So they had to right. come up with different solutions. Yeah. And we keep on discovering new species that sleep because yeah, maybe, you know, some years ago we thought it's only these animals that sleep or these animals, but we keep on finding new species that sleep. So it seems like every living organism needs some form of sleep. Some, some form. It's so essential. Yeah, crazy. for sure. And I think we all know how important and how much we like our sleep, how important we think sleep is. So I can imagine you know, for something that's out there trying to not get eaten and running away and trying to, you know, to survive, how important sleep would be for all of them. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you so much. And thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And we will see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.